Hello everyone, this is Dr. Singaram. Welcome to today's discussion about monkeypox, a pediatric perspective. We all know that recently few cases in India have been reported and WHO has declared this disease as a global health emergency. A brief introduction to this disease, it is caused by monkeypox virus which is the most important member of the genus orthopox. Another important member of this genus orthopox is the smallpox which has now been eradicated. Coming to the monkeypox, it is an infectious zoonotic disease as we all know, primarily affecting the monkeys. However, please remember in endemic countries like Africa, other animals also have been affected and these include primarily the African rainforest squirrel as well as the African rats. This disease was first observed in humans from the West and Central Africa in 1970s. It was roughly the time at which the smallpox was eradicated. And the secondary attack rate of this disease is around 3% and even in the ongoing cases also, the secondary attack rate is less. Coming to the ways by which it is transmitted, it is primarily transmitted from an infected animal to the human by bite of the infected animal or by coming in contact with the body fluids of the infected animals. This would include the infected secretions as well as the blood. It is also possible that it can be transmitted uh, by a human to human transmission. This is primarily by skin to skin contact with the lesions, especially the skin lesion as well as the mucocutaneous lesions or by coming in contact with the body fluids of the infected persons. Coming to the clinical course of the disease, we all know that it follows a clinical course which is similar to that of the smallpox even though it is a mild form of a disease. Okay. However, another point to be noted is there are certain characteristic differences between the smallpox and the monkeypox which I will be highlighting further. The incubation period of this particular disease is around 10 to 14 days and during this incubation period, the virus primarily replicates in the lymphoid tissue. This is an important, important point to be noted. This is because in the initial prodrome of two to four days, where we know the common features like fever, malaise, headache or body ache, along with that, there is also lymphadenopathy noted. This is a very, very important feature because Lymphadenopathy is usually not noted with smallpox but is a characteristic feature of monkeypox and this lymphadenopathy is usually a generalized form of lymphadenopathy and coming to the defining feature of this disease which is the exanthem or the rash. Rash usually begins from the upper part that is the uh, head and face region and then progresses downwards. This is what is called as a characteristic cephalocaudal progression. The rash to begin with is a macule but rapidly progresses to a papule which again quickly turns into a vesicle which finally changes into a pustule. This occurs over a period of 2 to 3 days. So there is a rapid change in the evolution of rash noted in monkeypox that has to be remembered. Another important point to be noted is as the rash occurs, the fever tends to decrease or abate. This is another characteristic feature which needs to be remembered. Another important distinguishing feature of this particular rash is that it tends to occur in crops. This occurrence of crops of rash is very very unusual in smallpox but it is very common in monkeypox. This is another distinguishing feature which needs to be remembered. How long does the rash occur or the duration of rash? It is around 7 to 10 days. After that, the rash tends to crust, scab and then fall off. These are the important features about rash associated with monkeypox. Coming to the diagnostic aspect of monkeypox, it can be diagnosed by culture of the infected lesion as well as by doing PCR testing 
to test for the viral DNA from the infected lesions. After this two testing, PCR testing for the viral DNA is found to have a better sensitivity compared to the culture and that is found to be the investigation of choice in monkeypox. The treatment of this disease is primarily symptomatic with most cases following a mild course compared to other viral exanthematous fevers. So primarily it is symptomatic treatment which is required which includes rest, fluids and adequate hydration. And coming to the antiviral treatment of this disease, there is a drug by name Picovirimat which inhibits major envelope protein. The major function of this envelope protein is to help in the replication and the spread of the virus. Thereby, this ticovirimat helps to prevent the spread of virus inside the human body. As per the CDC guidelines, this drug is recommended for young children, especially those less than the age of 8 years who are at risk of acquiring a severe disease. The general group of uh, children who are at risk of developing a severe disease are those with the comorbidities. They only require the sticovirimat treatment and that is as per the CDC guidelines. As far as vaccines are concerned, there is no directly available monkeypox vaccine but it is observed that in so many studies, vaccination against smallpox provides 85% cross protection rate thereby decreasing the severity of monkeypox. The only approved vaccine for infants and small children is LC16 which comes under the category of minimally replicating vaccine. However, please note that there are no routine recommendations for usage of this uh, vaccines for normal children. Those who are at risk of probably getting a severe disease may be considered for this particular vaccine. So that is about the discussion of uh, monkeypox from a pediatric perspective. I hope it was useful. Please do share with your friends and press on the subscribe to this channel button to get notified about the new videos as and when they are published. Thank you.